City, I suppose, a few days on now. How do you reflect on what happened on the weekend? Yeah, it was, it was a really disappointing end to the season that, that promised probably more than that, if they had to be honest. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll go through a review process over the next few weeks, but in terms of the game itself, it was a, it was a disappointing end to the season that we thought could be better. Just for some context around some of the players you carried into the game, looking back with regards to Todd and Trent, these sorts of guys, if it was a regular season game, would they have played? Like how underdone were they? How sore were they? Well, I mean, Todd, well, they, they both obviously saw Todd play probably the second half of the, the season with, with Niggles, and so yeah, that, that was a challenge for him. Uh, Trent you know, went into the game clearly having the injury the previous week. Yeah, the, the selection discussion with regard to Trent really was, you know, is is a fit, a, you know, three quarter fit McKenzie a better alternative than whoever else? You know, the, the the coaches might have played, and ultimately they made that decision. When you when you go into a game where you would think that if Trent's your first choice, then your next might be Jonas, who's injured, and then the next one after that might be Cleary, who's injured, going into the season, and then you're left with some some younger guys. You know, ultimately those decisions are made all the time where, where they just favoured Trent on the night. Now, whether that was a good or bad decision, it, it looked like Trent you know, wasn't as, as fit maybe as what he had been earlier in the year. Does uh, Charlie, does he, does he fall into that category as well or is he just matching, lacking in match fitness? Uh, in, in the game? No, I, I actually thought Charlie, Charlie played quite well in, in terms of you know, a guy who came in off of a significant break out of the team. You know, we certainly didn't need him to be as injured as he was at the end of the year. You know, and, and although, you know, that's not the excuse for the performance overall, we, we definitely had some guys who were key position type players who weren't at their fittest. And, you know, we need to reflect on that through this next period of time. But ultimately, sometimes that's the, the cards that you dealt with. But I, I didn't think that Charlie was our worst performed player uh, on Saturday night. Well, it's a really interesting question because you know if, if you look at the end of last year, you know disappointing season last year overall. We come into this year, and people probably don't have the expectations maybe at the start of the season than what they do at the end. So we, we've really got to work through, you know, what what is real and what's not in terms of. Yeah, we, we approached this year, we thought we had a good chance, but there were people outside of the club who are, who are probably uh, critical right now who maybe didn't think that we would end up in the situation that we did through the minor round. So that's something that yeah, we reflect on in saying that the minor round was, was actually quite a good performance. We, you know, we, we had games there which we lost that we, we have to reflect on because we lost you know, quite badly in terms of both margin and also some of the key stats in the game and then we, we go into a finals campaign where clearly you know we, we had some guys who were underdone but ultimately you know some of the, the things that worked during the minor round didn't work you know during the, the finals and, and our midfield in both games you know weren't weren't at their best um, you know and, and they were people who were really good for us during the year so you know I'm optimistically thinking that some of those things will be better through experience uh, it's very hard to sit back now and think that Connor, Zach, let's say Jake Swan Francis won't be better, Miles Bergman won't be better for the experience that they've gone through this year, but we're definitely going to need them to be better when the time comes and the whips are cracking into the future. Were the personnel issues, you know, bad luck or is there an issue in, in timing your run as, as a football club to make sure you're peaking when you hit finals? Well, I think they're all things that we'll, we'll reflect on now and the, the injuries that those guys got were, were impact type injuries. It, it, you know, we're not talking about soft tissue things that, that happen you know, at odd times. These were, these were you know, impact injuries, which unfortunately have, have happened quite regularly for us. So we're happy to review all the things, I guess, outside of you know, Tom's, Tom's car for the training towards the end. But if you think about Cleary, if you think about McKenzie, if you think about Todd, if you think about Charlie, even Scott Lyson, um, you know, they're, they're big, big people within our team who unfortunately had collision type injuries that we're going to have to be mindful of the way that they're managed down the track. We have, yeah, so, so unfortunately, um, 
you know, we don't get a great deal of time once the season ends through the, the, the PA. The AFL PA need us to have the players you know, out in uh, three or four days after the season. So all of the exit interviews finished yesterday. I'll check on a few players. That's Scott Lysett, a bit of talk that he might be headed this way. Uh, well, I think Scott right now is, is more thinking about whether he wants to continue to play. Um, you know, he's, he's in a position where, uh, you know, he's had, you know, pretty injury interrupted last few years and, and the poor bugger right now is as big of a warrior as he has been. He's, he's really banged up. You know, you think a, a guy who, again, you know, was able to, to get back at the end of the year probably earlier than we thought he might be, uh, has worked hard, but, you know, he's, he's spending some time away now just to, to think about what he wants in the future first and foremost. What is the Sorry? Well. Yeah, I mean, Raz, you know, we're, you know we, we haven't been able to finalise some of those list decisions because we need to, to go through a really important period of time for us from a trade perspective. Um, you know, I think, you know, we, we all see that, that Orazio has significant talent uh, and we would have liked to have seen it more at AFL level, you know, in the past two or three years. Whether that means that uh, he continues to be contracted, you know, uh, into the future uh, remains to be seen. But I, th I think it's, I think it's more likely than not that we'll want to give Raz, you know, an opportunity. But but how the numbers fall out from a, you know, a trade and, and list number perspective, you know, I, I can't answer that right now. What about Oki? He said so he's pretty positive leaving yesterday. Yeah, well, it's been interesting to, to reflect on all of the, the discussion that, that happened, I think, to Trav in, in the lead up to last week. You know, what, I, what I can absolutely guarantee you again is that Travis is thinking about you know, whether he has the, the passion to continue to play. Uh, if he wants to do that, he'll be at Port Adelaide next year, yes. So this is a deal for him to do? It will be. Yeah, yeah as, I, as I said, if he wants to play next year, um, he'll be at Port Adelaide. But I think we all need to give Travis the respect and the time right now to actually go away and think, you know, this has been a, a guy who's, who's been outstanding for this footy club, who, who has done a lot. He probably, you know, we, we understand the level of scrutiny that, that he is under, but, you know, he's asked for a, for a couple of weeks to think about things and I've got no problem at all for Travis to, to end the season and, and um, you know, have a real good think about, you know, how he wants to come back next year, but I cannot reiterate enough that if, if Travis wants to be uh, at Port Adelaide next year as a, as a player, then he will be. What was the club's reaction when you heard the speculation from Melbourne that he'd been told he was done? Uh, what was my reaction? Uh, I live in a world where people speculate wrong things all the time, so it doesn't actually surprise me, but I can only tell you what the actual position is and that is that if you'd like to get it again that uh, heard you know, it twice. Okay, good. what about your reaction when Brody said he wasn't coming uh, that was obviously one that was important enough for Ken to go to Melbourne and, and meet with him yeah well I mean all, all of the players that we try to recruit into the club ultimately get get the coach and others talking to them um, yeah, we, we ended up in a situation where we, we thought probably Brody was better off elsewhere and, and ultimately Brody probably thinks he's better off elsewhere without wanting to preempt any those discussions. I, I don't need to talk about any more other than to say this is what happens sometimes. You, you uh, talk to a player who you might want to come and, and it doesn't happen. Um, equally, we talk to players sometimes who we don't want it to happen. Um, that's just the nature of the game. Is that one of the bigger areas of concern about heading into next year? You've got you know, Skirter who's weighing up his future and Brody said no. <coughs> How important is that drug spot and what are your options there? Yeah, we're, we're definitely trying to get some additional you know, talent into the squad in that position. So, you know, I, I, as I understand it, uh, you know, Jordan Sweet has told the, the Bulldogs that he wants to end up here and, and we'd like Jordan to end up here as well. Uh, yeah, we think he's got some, we think he's, you know, the premier ruckman in the, in the VFL comp and he's probably behind the best ruckman in the AFL comp. So, yeah, we think he's got some some obvious talent. But, you know, we also think that Dante Vicentini has a career ahead of him as well. You know, a guy who's aggressive, you know, young bloke who, who we think, you know, at 20 or 21 years of age, you know, could have a real future. So, 
but, but there's no denying we, we would like to you know, get some, some further talent into the, the ruck area of the club. What about Solder? Is there interest in him? Uh, as I say, we, we're interested in, in you know, all of the, the potential ruck people who are you know, thinking about moving from their initial club. If that's, if that's Ivan Solder, then you know, we'll certainly be in that conversation. Does that, is that why Sam Hayes is potentially still in the body and waiting for ins, ins and outs on that front? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, you know, we, we really you know, we value what Sam has brought to our club over time. But, you know, again, is this list the numbers and where you're going to end up, you know, through the, through the trade period, you know, Sam has, has done a job for us. But I, th I think also in fairness to Sam, you know, we, we haven't been able to totally commit to him as our number one ruck over a period of time as well. So I understand if he, you know, wants to look at what his options are, but as I say, we, we're definitely looking to bring some some you know, talent into the club. Just, just take a moment for a second. If he does decide to play on, how do you see his, uh, where he actually plays next season from an AFL standpoint? Because there's obviously been some suggestion out there that conversations take place that have come with a caveat that perhaps the club doesn't want to see him in his career. Yeah, I definitely don't. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm more than happy to confirm that I think that someone like Travis deserves far better than to play footy at SNFL level, and that's not to be disrespectful to the SNFL. That's my that's my honest opinion, as it was with Robbie Gray, as it was with you know Evo, as it was with Hamish, as it was with all of the people that we've ex exited out of this club, you know, previously. Now that's not always only our decision as well, and and in these situations, Matt. You, you be honest with the player and say, mate, we, we don't want that, but we also think that you've still got some things to give us at, at AFL level, but we've got to go into whatever the future looks like with our eyes wide open for both parties. Uh, and so we, we are absolutely doing that. And, you know, uh, as I say, we've, we've told Travis that if he wants to play, we want him to continue to play at Port Adelaide at AFL level, not, not be thinking about um, playing at SNFL level, we want him to have the best pre-season that he possibly can if he continues to play and, and be a, an integral member of our team as he has been in the last 16 seasons. So you see him as part of his best in Well, if he, at Travis Boak's best, of course he is part of our best. And, and even not at Travis Boak's best, he's still better than you know, some of the alternatives that we will either bring into the club into the future or we've already got. I mean, that, to be honest. Travis, Travis is an absolute star, and uh, and so you know the idea that we can't be honest with our people and have honest conversations to me is you know not the way that you want to approach these types of things. But as I say, Travis, if he wants to continue to play uh, at AFL level, which is more than you know his decision to make only, and, and I'm going to give him the time to do that. But if he wants to, it'll be a point. Be confident you'll get a Salva. Confident enough to enter enter the period, wanting that to happen. You know, typically, uh, when players are out of contract, it, it makes it easier. You know, for all of these types of deals to get done. You know, the, the Asaba situation was, you know, was made harder by the fact that he still had a year to go on his contract. That's not the case this year. So, you know, we'll, we'll go into the trade period wanting wanting good outcomes for the club and fair outcomes overall. You know, we'll, so Jason and I will have to deal with the teams that, that we need to and, and if we need to get others involved then so be it. But you know, we, we've got clear areas of our list that we we know that we would like to fill now and, and you know, the one uh, aspect of people confirming that they want to come and, and it getting out you know, whilst the season is on is that you all get to understand that we see the same things sometimes and, uh, and bringing both the Sava uh, and you know, Zerg to the club you know, has the potential for us to, to fill some gaps that we think we struggled in at the end of the year. What did you make of Chris Scott's coming out and up around the summer and his confidence to let him go uh, and also the hitting of the price that that was going to be? I didn't hear. So what did what did he say? Well, just that these players don't come tri cheap. He sort of lumped him in with Mackay and the Rasso West Coast and, and that is a, is a high price for them. Yeah. Do you agree with that? And do you think I, you look, it, it actually doesn't matter whether I agree with it or not. Um, you know, Sava is a Geelong player at, at the moment, and 
Geelong are within their rights to ask for whatever they do or don't want. And we'll have to work with uh, you know, Andrew Mackey and, and the people at Geelong to work out what a deal looks like. You know, Sarvis confirmed he doesn't want to be Geelong and he's out of contract. So typically, I'd say he probably won't be at Geelong next year. And let's hope that he's at Port Adelaide. How's it clear? Yeah, Cluz is, Cluz is contracted, but you know what? What I again, you know, we've been honest in saying to to Cluz that you know ultimately, if we bring in these types of players, mate, it's going to shuffle you down the order. Now that doesn't mean that you don't have a future at Port Adelaide, but equally, you know, Cluz has been a, a good um, you know person to have at our club, and and if he thought that his future was going to lie outside of Port Adelaide, then we'd we'd have to be good enough to to be open to that. You know, I, mean, I think you all know over the years, we've always and I've always taken the approach of saying if, if a player wants to look for more opportunities at another club, then, then I totally get that. These guys are professional footballers who want to play at, at AFL level. Now, Klaus has had a lot of injuries, so you know I'm tipping he would have played a whole heap more footy for us at AFL level this year if he wasn't injured. But the reality if, is if those two guys come in, then Klaus is probably going to be shuffled down the order and he's going to have a fight in his hands. So, you can fit, he's fit to play though. He, uh, he's, well, he's fit now. He, you know, he, yeah. he's had yeah, it's uh, a few weeks too late. But uh, you know, he, he had his operation and he'll be back running actually this week. So you know, if, if Cluz ends up at another club, then you know he's a he's a fantastic guy. We're, we're not pushing him out, but but I'm certainly saying that um, you know all of these situations require you know people to work through them, understanding that the guys want to play footy at AFL level. Are there any, are there any <coughs> players that you expect to ask to leave? Well, no, no one's actually asked to leave you know, in, the, in the last two days, but we've, we've had honest conversations to say if, um, you know, if, if a player isn't playing in our AFL team regularly and thinks that they should, then let's, let's have that conversation. Not, not now, we can have it you know, in, a, in a week's time. And, and I'm sure that there'll be players who might come back to us, but typically, you know, not too many players want to leave if they're playing at AFL level at Port Adelaide. Well, I was going to talk about Xavier for some reason <coughs> over the last couple of years. Where's his new track? Yeah. Who's that, sorry? Xavier Durst. Where's, uh, what, I mean, Zave's contracted. He's in, he, you know, he's in our AFL team every week. You know, if he, if he um, you know, wanted to leave, that would have to be a, a proper discussion because I don't think there's any real reason you know, for him to to leave Port Adelaide, um, so yeah, he's just uh, you know, expect him to to be pre-season next year. How's all he's been? He said he did say during the year that it was in, it was affecting him. He said it's probably one of the worst seasons he's had. Will he need surgery of any sorts? Uh, look, he might need a, need a minor tidy up. We're, we're going through that at the moment. I mean, Ollie's Ollie's season, you know, by his own admission, publicly wasn't what he wanted it, it to be. Um, you know, our, our job now is to support him back through you know, the, the pre-season and get him back into being a, you know, the high quality player that we know he can be at AFL level that, that he has been over time and there's no doubt you know, when you look at the weekend's game and, and our midfield you know, getting, getting dominated by GWS's midfield when, when those guys come back there's, there's going to be some, some work that we need them to do and it's not to say again that we don't think that that young group of players can be better. They will be better. You know, we can't we can't look at the seasons that all of those boys have had and not have some optimism that Connor and Zach and, and Jace are are not going to be better in the future. They are going to be better in the future. And a fit and healthy and firing Ollie Wines will make those guys better. Even if Ollie's form doesn't reach what we know it can, him being better than this year will make those other young guys better into the future. And that's Really, what we want for for Ollie? Will he be your captain next year? Uh, we'll, we'll have to work. We'll have to work through that again. We we have to think about what's setting individuals and the team up for success down the track. You know, I don't think that uh, you know it's it's not a fait accompli that that Ollie is captain, and that doesn't mean that I don't think he's uh, an outstanding leader and potentially the the best one. But we have to be mindful of how we can get Ollie back. He's 29 now. Um, and what the future of our club is going to look like. You know, this year, and if you go back to the, the starting question about you know, was the season a success, of course it wasn't ultimately because we weren't able to get to the levels that, that we have. But we, what we have seen this year is a generational shift in our club 
that's come naturally um, that we have to jump on the back of. And, and the Bergmans, those three boys I mentioned before, you know, the, the Marshalls, um, that's, that's the future, you know, of what the next generation of Port Adelaide is going to look like. And I think we've been good enough, Ken's been good enough to foster that in the past and we need to uh, make sure that you know, that gets the, the space to grow into the future. But it doesn't mean that we don't want success now. We do. With those yeah, boosts okay. through the 20 minute period, <coughs> he's, he's choking. Do you need to see? I'm fine. Right. 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 I told everyone I'm standing up here. Can you give us your best? Absolute last few minutes. No, no, mate. Keep going. With Rosie, Butters, Marshall. Don't leave it. 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 Are you going to wait until next year to recontract them? Do you look to extend them as, as quickly as you can? Look, there's no doubt in my mind that all three of those players, without you know having signed deals right now, that all three of those players are committed to Port Adelaide and will be committed long term. What's the, um, how does the club view the criticism around re-signing Ken before finals? Uh, well, I, I, it's natural at, at this time. You know, clearly there's there's a want for this team to be better than what it is and, and you know, the, the coach and myself and some others cop you know, the, the brunt of that criticism. I think that's natural at this point in time. The reality is that they're two different questions though. You know, is Ken the coach for you know, the, the future? Should we have re-signed Ken at a time where we think that he is? That, that hasn't changed. We're really disappointed with how the end of the season went, but it doesn't mean that we have any less faith in Ken to be the coach for us, you know, in the in the next you know two years. In terms of the timing, you know, we've spoken about to, um, do it, doing it then would help eliminate a void, but so did it potentially have the opposite effect? The team lost its edge a little bit. No, I think I think that's. I think I, if that's if that's a criticism, it's it's really hard to to cop. To be honest, it, there is not any person in here who who is sitting here and feeling comfortable with their position, whether it be Ken or whether, it, you know, which player do you then think drop their edge? It just doesn't happen in a professional, I mean, you know, that, that, that does not happen in actual professional sporting organisations. So anyone who has, you know, a long-term deal or a contract into next year, it is just an absolute furphy that that means that that person drops their intensity in this type of environment, in a tough competition. It just doesn't happen. And those people get weeded out very quickly. Ken wouldn't have lasted as long as he has if at the, any point that he comes to the end of his deal, he's taking his foot off of the pedal. It just is not something that's actually real. Dave, I know Dave King seems to have a lot to say about Port Adelaide, but um, the, the assertion that Kenny is just an average coach, or Kenny average, as he called him, as a friend of his more than anything, how, how, how do you feel about that sort of discussion? As a friend of who? Ken's. <laughs> Oh, well, Ken and I work. I get along really well with Ken. I've got no interest in responding to David King through you. If you've got a question, then I'm happy to I'm happy to answer it. But well, I, my question is then: Do you agree with his assessment that he's an average guy? No. How is Ken? Has he, he said he expects scrutiny and he's ready for it? As a, as a bloke, he's always relatively level headed and jovial with us. Has he been in the last week or so? No, Ken's a, Ken's a resilient person you have to be to be in this game. You certainly have to be to be in the game for as long as he has. It doesn't mean that he doesn't hear the criticism and he doesn't you know, take it on board. It, it, it doesn't wash off of any of us easily, least alone Ken. You know, he's a guy who ultimately has to front the media you know, after the game. He's the, the guy who cops it as we walk off after the game. Um, he's a guy who, who carries you know, a fair bit of it you know, down the street, um, you, you can't avoid it, but it's but it's part of part of the job. And yeah, you know, what I do know is, uh, in the short period of time after the game, Ken's resolve to take this club forward and to take it forward with success has not changed one bit. Um, you know, he's he's absolutely committed to getting this group of players, a uh, you know, group of players who largely now he has. Um, picked in drafts and you know put a whole heap of faith in when maybe others wouldn't have or didn't. Um, you know, he, he, he feels like he's got a group to take the club forward and if we can bring in some some talent through the trade period in areas that you all can see we, we need some help in then maybe we, we can be better. You know, I think we can be optimistically. In fact I've got no doubt that we can be. Just one last one I 
do you expect him to go back <coughs> into the midfield mix more than next season once he has a full pre-season? Yeah, 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 that's a that's a good point that I didn't touch on earlier. If you if you're thinking you know optimistically about our group, you think that uh, you know Horn Francis didn't have a preseason at all. Uh, Ollie you know, had a had a battling preseason, so I, I think that those two guys, if you're just looking at you know our midfield and how that can get better, you know I would expect those two to to have better preseasons than what they did last year and and to progress. Um, yeah, Ollie. You know, Ollie's a guy who found, I mean, Ollie was still part of our midfield this year. Yeah, yes, he played some time on the wing, but you know, part of that is a, was a rotational thing. Obviously, Travis played out on the wing this year. Some of that was to, was to give time, extra time to Connor, Zach, Horn Francis. You know, Willem Drew had an outstanding year. So sometimes, you know, that, that question of, you know, did Ollie find himself out in the wing and is that his posi best position or if Trav ended up, sorry, in, uh, you know, in a, in a place that maybe you didn't think allowed him to play his best footy. Well, you know, the, the trade-off for that right now for this club is that Connor, Zach and Jace Horn Francis did. And, you know, we, we want them to be better into the future. What about their finals? Obviously, they did throughout the year. But yeah, mate, they're, mate, they're 22 years of age, mate. They, no, they, no, they, no. they, they need to, they, they didn't perform on the weekend and they didn't perform the weekend before. But as I say, that doesn't mean that we don't have absolute faith that those guys are going to be better. And, you know, trajectories of career are not linear. Um, people take different views of, of where people end up. And I'm saying right now that those guys, I'm 100% of the belief that they'll be better for the experience, albeit they weren't able to get it done on the weekend. Josh Sin, just an update. Yeah, Sinny has, um, you know, he had an operation, um, you know, a couple of weeks ago. He'll he'll be fine. Um, you know, we expect him. The, the timing of his injury this year is is better in the sense that he will come back to pre-season fit um, and and ready to go from you know minute one of pre-season, which now is uh, November 27. So um, I'll see you guys then, and uh, probably in the lead up to the trade period. Not before. Well, I think Maddie. I'll, be, I'll miss you. I'm sure. I think, I think Maddie specifically. Well done, Matt. If he's, 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 he's on the money there. Yep, definitely. You know, Narkel will be at the club next year as well. I mean, Hugh Jackson's a great story. You know, Hugh, Hugh is a guy who was very close to playing at AFL level this year, you know, a few times. We took him away for the experience. He was also, you know, an emergency a couple of times. Um, but his form at SNFL level was, was outstanding. You know, a year where I probably didn't have massively high hopes for our SNFL team, but they ended up in the finals. You know, did a did a pretty good job. Um, yeah, we have had to take obviously delisting. You know, Bren and Riley Bonner, you know, Nathan Barkler. Um, yeah, yesterday's not easy. Um, there was something else. Trent, Trent Dumont, who uh, you know, who's been you know a, a battler for our club over the last couple of years. All guys who you know we wish well.